So this song was actually my biggest challenge and my biggest accomplishment. David had the crazy idea of having me sing Reasons by Earth, Wind & Fire. And obviously it's a gorgeous song, it's a beautiful song, but I don't have much experience singing, you know, soulful music. And I think David really honed it in and he said, look, this song will fit you because, you know, your voice, you know, the, the register that you can sing in it reminds me of Philip Bailey's voice. And if he can do it, you can do it, then let's try it. So I said, sure, why not? And it was the first time I've ever sang a song and felt incredibly sexy. And I didn't know that music could move me as I'm performing it. And this is not me tooting my own horn. I was just saying that the music was so gorgeous and I become so carefree when I'm singing it and the notes are just gorgeous. And I think this one's gonna be my favorite one on the album, My Funny Valentine. <laughs> It's a song I've heard before, and honestly, I didn't know that it was considered a romantic song because the lyrics are kind of, they're gorgeous, obviously, but you know, it, it, the title says it all. It's about a, a girl who's probably not as gorgeous as she thinks she could potentially be, but he sees her as gorgeous, and therefore she's his funny little Valentine. And I, I've been put in situations, I've never felt like the most beautiful person in the world. So if anything, I was kind of singing a song to myself, you know? Um, it's a beautiful song. David loves the song. Everybody loves this song. And I figured, why not sing it? So here I am singing it. So Stranger in Paradise. Beautiful song, obviously. I'm going to say that about every song on this. Um, I didn't originally hear it as a um, jazz uh, uh, song. It wasn't a jazz piece when I first heard it. I actually heard it on a Sarah Brightman record. And um, it was a classical piece. So that's how I heard it. And when I threw that song at David, of course he knew it as, you know, the Tony Bennett's have sung it, the Frank Sinatra's, you know, the Nat King Coles have sung it. And I thought, oh, they did? <laughs> so, you know, I, this is my first time singing jazz or whatever thought, but um, the arrangement was still obviously, it was kind of the same, kind of different. And so it was a challenge for me, but a good challenge. I like a good challenge. And it, the results were gorgeous. And yeah, I, I'm really happy that that one's on this too. So this is the one I was the most nervous about, People. What a great song, obviously. And that was the one I was the most confused about because I didn't know that David thought so highly of my voice that I could do the song justice. And he said, trust me, you know, we're gonna make an arrangement that's gonna fit your voice and do the song justice. It's gonna be gorgeous. And my God, he was right. We came into the studio and we recorded it. We did harmonies and, and everything, and it's just, it's it's a light, slower, you know, jazzier version of the song. And obviously Streisand, who wouldn't want to sing that? Uh, hopefully she hears it, Hope maybe she won't. I don't know, but hopefully she does. But uh, yeah, I love that song as well. Okay, so how can we not talk about La Vie en Rose? Obviously, everybody's heard it. It's a great, great song. And all the greats have performed it. That was not originally on the album. It wasn't on the track list that we had planned for like two or three months. We get into the studio. There was another song that was supposed to be uh, in that in its place. And it wasn't, it, it's a really great song that it was. It just didn't fit. And it was when David came and he pulled it up and we kind of looked at each other and went, well, now that we've recorded the other ones, this kind of seems out of place. And, well, he said that first. I didn't want to say anything. And then I agree with him and I said, thank God you said it first because I don't think it fits either. So we said, we need to come up with something like now. And I started throwing jazz standards at him, though, at least the ones that I knew. And La Vie and Rose came up and he said, ding! And he goes, all right, well, learn it. And I said, I kind of already know it. It's, you know, it's in French, so I'm gonna to have to sing it in English. And so I went back to my hotel room overnight, came back into the studio and he had it, he had it ready. In fact, he sent the arrangement to me that same night before I even came in. And it was incredible. It, you know, it, the way that he arranged it is very Latin sounding. It's, you know, there's a lot of groove in it and it's, it's sensual, but it's fun. And you can really snap your fingers to it and just sing along. And it's a fun song. It's a really feel good song. 
And I think that's really great. And the great thing about that is the track lists, none of the songs sound like each other. They're all completely different sounds, but they're all brought together with, you know, my voice and David's style of composing. And that's one I'm really excited for everyone to hear as well. It's just a fun, fun song to sing. Lasha Kyopianga is a classical piece that I don't think I've ever recorded. In fact, no, I have not. Um, it's a beautiful, beautiful song. The first time I ever heard it was uh, by the mezzo-soprano Cecilia Bartoli. And I thought it was stunning. Then I was really shocked to find out how it was written and what kind of singer it was written for, you know, originally. It was not written for a, a female to sing. So, you know, it was around, you know, it was the Baroque era and Castrati was very, very, very famous at the time. And I saw a film called Farinelli, uh, which has uh, that track in it, uh, written by Handel. And immediately said, well, then that's my song. That's the one I need to sing. And so when I threw the idea at David, he said, of course, why not? You know, the, those were the rock stars of that era. And, uh, you know, me being myself, you know, a, a fan of rock and roll, I thought, well, then there you go. That's the kind of musician we want to be, minus the castrati. <laughs> well, Obvio Babino Caro. Everybody knows that I've sung that song a thousand times. Um, it's what I've... Well, it's what I'm known for. It's what I auditioned with on America's Got Talent. And it just holds a really, really cool, like a close place in my heart. Um, I've always loved singing it. I never get tired of singing it, but there's different versions of how I've performed it. And David has created an arrangement of it that is unlike what I've heard before. So it's not like, uh, oh, here's this song again. It's it's the same song, but it's it's not the same song, really. It's, I'm really excited for people to hear this version of it. <laughs> 